It was that silent night when the stars turned their gaze to marvel at the earth. When the heavens gathered breathless round a lowly stable. When a young mother wept tears of worship, falling on the baby in her arms. And the song of the earth arose in Bethlehem, soft as the tender beating of his heart. And all was calm, all was bright. Yet could this be the same God of Abraham, the conqueror of Israel, this baby, this fragile life? Is this child the one who burned his name in rapture across the gasping skies? Whose voice spoke the oceans into crashing rhythms? Who crafted the mountains into guardians of the firmament? Whose hand ignited the thirst of the deserts and the warring surge of the elemental hosts? Who breathed life from dust? Broke the oppressor's rule? Scattered the chains of his people like sand? And led them through the wilderness with the pillar of flame? Is this child the one whose presence billowed thunderous on Sinai's peak? Who surrounded Job with the roaring wind? Stood defiant in the raging furnace, wrote judgment against tyrants, and blazed on the lips of the prophets, scorching history's pages with the fury of his might. Could this be the same God who chose to come as the vulnerable king, setting his throne on straw and manger, drawing forth the tears of shepherds, receiving the gifts of wandering travelers, his fame unknown in this world. He is Jesus, the one who thunders through the heavens, yet whispers to our hearts, who reigns victorious, yet bows to serve the broken. He is God in the fury, God in the silence. He holds this mystery balanced in his hands, holds our questions till they lose their need, until all we see is him. Well, good morning everyone and happy Christmas to you. I trust that you've had a, a lovely morning so far. And um, I pray that you'll have a, a blessed rest of, of the day, uh, wherever you are and um, whoever you're with and whatever you're doing, that you'll have a blessed uh, Christmas indeed. I don't want to keep you long, but I'd like to bring you um, a Christmas uh, message today. And um, the title of this message that I want to bring before you is Jesus is a better representative. Jesus is a better representative. And that's one of the um, wonderful things about uh, Christmas for us as, as Christians, but also for us as a testimony to the world, that Christmas places Jesus or sets God before us. Christmas sets God before us. And the reason why Christmas sets God before us is because Jesus Christ, who is God of very God in human flesh, is called the light of the world in the scriptures. And the world, says the Bible, is a darkened place by reason of sin and the fullness of, um, of humanity and everything that, that goes with that. And in that dark situation that humanity um, is, is in, light has come into the world in Jesus Christ. Jesus, God, is set before us as the light of the world, the one who is the great saviour um, of, of humanity. And so this is the reason for this particular message. Jesus is our better representative and Jesus is our better representative for humanity unto God. So I'll go in and explain that a little bit later but before I do that I'm going to bring two passages of scripture to you and I'll read them out. The first passage is from Romans chapter 5 verses 15 to 19 and then 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 45 and 47. So let me read this to you. But the free gift is not like the offence. For if by the one man's offence many died, 
much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment which came from one offence resulted in condemnation, but the free gift which came from many offences resulted in justification. For if by the one man's offence offense, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as through one man's offence judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation, even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience many would be made righteous. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Have you ever noticed that with each passing Christmas, the world attempts to improve on the Christmas experience? So we have greater Christmas productions in the theatres, the new wow gifts that are presented before us that are set to improve uh, one's life or bring greater joy to our children, new improved cooking techniques so that you and I can enjoy the best turkey ever, bigger house parties, bigger, better Christmas lights, bigger, better tree even. And the list goes on and on and on. And the quest for the best ever Christmas seems never to end. We're always wanting more. And it seems to me that everyone is endeavouring to try to find the source the, 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 the fountainhead of all joy in materialistic gain or even crowds of people. Not that there is anything wrong um, with these things. We know that they can add richness um, and enjoyment uh, to our life. But yet, if we are honest with ourselves, deep down within our innermost being, Looking exclusively to these things, we find it doesn't really seem to cut it within us. It doesn't really seem to satisfy us fully. We're left with this eerie knowing, an eerie emptiness. And we may ask the question, is this it? Is this it? There's a songwriter and his name um, is Johnny Lee. And he wrote a song called looking for love in all the wrong places, looking for love in all the wrong places. And maybe the reason why Christmas does not hold everything that we hope for, and it's not really the best Christmas that we ever hoped it to be, is because maybe we're looking in all the wrong places for the true meaning and the true worth and the value of Christmas. And I believe that the Bible teaches us that if we want to experience the best Christmas ever, we're not to look so much at the Christmas season, but the Christ of Christmas. Because he is, as the cliche says, the reason for the season. We're not to consider the Christmas tree as the central part of the festivities and the joyful feeling, but for us as Christians, we look to Calvary's tree, which when welcomed and opened and understood, really does bring us true joy and entrance into the fullness of the kingdom joy. We're called not to place so much worth and comfort upon the Christmas presents themselves, but we are called as Christians and to recognise and welcome the very presence of Christ himself. For in his presence is fullness of joy and at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. So what the Bible is pointing us towards so that we can get the most out of Christmas is a person and his name is Jesus. He is better than anything else. He is a better representative 
of a better way of enjoying Christmas. Jesus is our better representative. Now, what I mean by this and what the Bible teaches us is that Jesus is the representative head of all humanity unto God. And the Bible says it's in Jesus' life, in his death and in his resurrection that counts towards our fullness that we can come before God when we receive him as a gift. And according to the Bible, there has only ever been two representatives for humanity before God. The first one that we've read in the passages of scripture was Adam. And Jesus is the last Adam, the second Adam. And part of why I think we celebrate Christmas is to mark the coming of Jesus Christ to be humanity's second and best representative unto God on our behalf. And that is why Jesus is called a better representative than Adam. Adam didn't represent humanity well before God. Jesus represents humanity well before God. So we're going to look at three things here to bring out that understanding. Here's the first one. Adam was a created being. Jesus Christ was not. Jesus is a better representative unto God because Jesus Christ was not a created being and Adam was. Let me clarify. Genesis informs us that Adam was created. Before he was created, Adam, that first man, was non-existent. Jesus, we are told in the scriptures, who is the second Adam, was and is eternal God. Jesus has always, God the Son, has always existed. We are told in the scripture reading that I read earlier on, Adam was from earth. Jesus came down to earth from heaven. We're told in 1 Corinthians 15, 47, that Jesus is the Lord from heaven. So the virgin birth helps us understand that Jesus is not just a mere man. The second person of the Trinity of God stepped down into human history through the vessel of a woman, Mary. We're told in John chapter 1, verse 14, that the word, that is God, became flesh and dwelt amongst us. The Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 19 that God was in Christ. So Christmas is when we celebrate the eternal God coming to us as a man in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is a better person to put your hope in for he is God of very God. He's not just a a mere man, a fallen man who has disobeyed God. He is God of very God. He is pure, he is holy, he is righteous. That's the first point. Adam was a created being, Jesus Christ was not. Second point, Adam disobeyed God and Jesus Christ perfectly obeyed God. Genesis records again um, that Adam who was our first representative head of humanity unto God, was given one command to obey and all would be well with him and all humanity following. He was told not to eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil or he would die. That was the one command he was given. Adam was created at that time perfect. Adam was placed in a perfect environment in the Garden of Eden in a perfectly formed world and yet... He still obeyed God and ate the fruit. Christmas, however, celebrates the coming of Jesus Christ, the second Adam. And he achieved what the first Adam could not achieve unto God, in that he perfectly obeyed God. Jesus is a better representative on, on our behalf than Adam in relation to obedience unto God. And my final point, Adam's sin made all of humanity sinners in God's sight. Jesus' obedience makes his people right in God's sight. The Apostle Paul tells us in Romans chapter 5, verse 12 to 14, that in Adam, humanity's first representative head before God, that his sin has been accounted to all of us. So therefore, we are all condemned by God for sin 
because of what Adam has done. How is the wrath of God and his anger upon us and upon our sin to be removed? How are we to be forgiven and not be condemned by God? Well, the answer lies in Jesus Christ. He's the second Adam, the final representative head of humanity unto God. And it's in his life that puts things all right before God when we believe on him. So Paul outlines in Romans chapter 5, verse 15 to 21, that Jesus was willing to represent us before God so that we could be saved from God's punishment and be forgiven of our sins and we can live out as God's children and come into all the blessing of what that means. So Jesus, as I said earlier, lived a perfect life of perfect obedience unto God's law on our behalf. Jesus willingly took God's punishment for our sins on the cross and he died for it on our behalf. Now for all those who would receive God's greatest gift in Jesus, a better representative unto God, and believe that Jesus has secured for us a new life with God through what he did for us in his life, in his death and resurrection, we have a legal right to be called the children of God and come into what Jesus called life and life to the full. Christmas celebrates Jesus in his capacity as the second Adam or as the last Adam, the final representative of humanity unto God. This was God's great plan for saving sinners and Christmas is a fulfilment of that plan of salvation from the very start. Christmas is the light of salvation, saving us out of darkness of our sin and a life outside of God and restoring us back unto God so that we can come into the fullness of God in our lives. The greatest Christmas gift has been given to us by God in Jesus Christ. We are invited to receive him, unwrap him, embrace him, whether that be a fresh for Christians um, this Christmas season, even today, maybe you take some time aside from the festivities of what is going on, a five minute walk, two minute stand outside in the garden and just thank God for the gift of Jesus, our second representative um, and to God for humanity and thank Jesus that he did that for us. Or it may be that you are a searcher and that you are looking to Jesus and you are seeing if he is the truth, he's the way. Well, can I encourage you to unwrap him and to embrace him? He is your final and best representative unto God on your behalf. And as you welcome the gift of God through Christ unto yourself and invite him into your life and for him to represent you unto God, you will come to know the true joy of what life is in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the perfect Christmas gift from God to us. He is the final and the best representative unto God on our behalf. Open your life to him, open your heart to him afresh or anew. I wish you a blessed and peaceful Christmas. Amen.